How's everybody doing today? Back again with another video for you guys. And today, we're going to be doing my full review on the Moto X Pure Edition. But real quick, before we talk about the device itself, I just want to talk about a few things that it came with. So number one, I wanted to talk about this uh, bumper guard here. And I must say, guys, that it worked pretty good pretty good now I did have an issue trying to uh, connect the charger and whatnot but I think that was just because of um, <clears throat> of a how, how I had it on did get a little confused I did figure it out after a while and you know in terms of minimal protection this works pretty well so this is pretty good. Good job, Motorola. Throw it off to the side. Next, next thing I want to talk about is this turbocharger here. Now this was pretty awesome and it's pretty long length. And I must say, even though we're going to talk about the battery some more in the battery section, but when it comes to charging, from 0 to 100, it was about an hour and a half with this guy. From about 15 to 100, it was about 45 minutes, give or take a few minutes. So this turbocharger worked out awesome. Just wanted to bring that up. Let's throw this off to the side. Alright, so now let's talk about the star of the show. The main attraction himself. The Moto X Pure Edition. Now... Starting off, let's talk about the build quality on this guy. Now, I must say, build quality wise, that this guy is awesome. Now, I don't know if you can see it too good, but right there, I did drop this guy face down um, a couple of times. So, and because I like the way this feels, I don't really use the bumper guard that much. So, it really withstood it well. I mean, there's no damage to the speakers or the screen itself. It just has a little ding right there. And if you go further up, there's another ding on there. Other than that, it still looks brand new. Brand new. So, I'm guessing that that's a testament to how Motorola built this device. And I must say... Overall build quality on this is awesome and it feels great in the hands. Now, so build quality on here is pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Now, moving on, let's talk about the display on this guy. So, up front, dead center here, as you can see, we have a 5.7 inch quad HD display. Now that's uh, 1440 by uh, 2560 and I must say guys in terms of display the display looks great and this isn't even turned up all the way. Now if I crank the brightness all the way you can see it gets fairly bright there. See my camera even has trouble dealing with the exposure. So outdoors didn't have any issues with this guy and I must say it gets fairly bright let me um let me turn it down some because it's making my eyes hurt let me clear out these notifications let me turn the brightness back down so no issues outdoors with this guy do it like that there we go and just so y'all see right there of course, he would crash when I get on camera here. So, right here, just to show you guys, let me let that focus up. So you can see the resolution is 1440 by 2560, and the screen density is 520. And overall, guys, I would say that this display is great everything looks great the colors they almost like pop off the screen 
I do have one little gripe with the display, however, being that it's such high resolution, it is a little power hungry, and that does affect the battery life, but we're going to talk about that when we get to the battery life section. Now, moving on, let's talk about the uh, hardware and software in this guy. So, hardware wise, we're running 3 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of internal storage with micro SD card expansion up to 128 gigs. We have dual front facing speakers on there. We have a 21 megapixel camera in the back with LED flash. We have a 5 megapixel camera in the front with LED flash. And I must say, this hardware package is pretty good. Pretty good. Now, software wise, we're running Android 6.0 Marshmallow. And it's a pretty much a bare bones version of Marshmallow, guys, with Motorola's little tweaks. So you have Motorola Connect right there. And that just allows you to share content between all of your Motorola devices. And then, where is it? I think I passed it. Right here, we have the Motorola Suite. So you can do things. I already set this up. You have your Motorola Actions. So you could do things like you could do your chop, your double chop to launch the uh, flashlight. You can do your twist to capture. You can do pick up to make a call and twist the capture. You just twist the camera like that and it opens the camera. And things like that. Now, this is really awesome. And then you also have, if you back out, you have your Motorola display. And what this is, is while the screen is off here, if you go like that, let me see, if I go like that, it'll give me a brief layout of any notifications and things that I had and you saw that earlier while I was talking about the display I did get a few notifications from Facebook and Stitcher Radio and that's really awesome because it allows me to see that without actually unlocking my phone so that's pretty cool and then you have you have other features like um, motor, the your phone will speak your text to you while you drive this way you don't actually have to touch your phone and you can make um, phone calls. Other things is you can use a custom launch phrase that you set up through Motorola's app and you can pretty much can control your phone via your voice without touching it at all. So I could say, I already set mine up, I could say, okay Moto X. And then I can ask it something like, what's the weather like today? Today's forecast for Palm Bay is 73 degrees with a thunderstorm. Mm-hmm. So, and I can ask all types of things. I can make um, phone calls. I can make text messages. I can browse the web. You know, and I could do that all without touching the phone. And so, I would say that's pretty cool. Other than that, it's stock Android 6.0 Marshmallow here. And I, I must really applaud Motorola for not going heavy in the skinning game and they just added pretty much the useful features so you got all of your marshmallow features here so and a little side note with marshmallow if I go to storage I can make my SD card the um, I don't know how well you can see that I can make my SD card the internal storage of the device so let me let that focus. Actually, I, I clicked the other uh, storage point. So there you go. So there you can see it says I'm using 25 gigs of 133. And that's because I have a 128 gig card in here. And what I did was I formatted it as inter internal. And now all my apps and updates go to the SD card instead of the phone. So as you can see, I'm, the real internal storage, I'm only using three, just over three gigs. But really what I'm doing is, it's all going to my SD card. 
And that's a neat little feature with Marshmallow. If your phone supports SD cards, you can make it internal storage. Other things are pretty much standard here. You can see how much memory your phone is using over certain time periods and things like that. In here, you can see all of your apps. Let me let that load up. And you can go ahead and change the permissions for those apps. So you can give any app any permissions you want it to. And you can de deny permissions for certain apps so you have complete control over your device. Other than that, it's pretty much stock Android. You got your users features. You got the cloud print. All that good stuff. And just to show you guys here, we are running 6.0. Marshmallow right here. So let me see. Let me hold it down. There you go. And I never win this game. Ah. Alright, but that's just to show y'all. So, that's the hardware and software. Now, moving on, let's talk about any glitches, stutters, and crashes that I've had with this guy. Now, overall, I would have to say that the performance on this has been pretty smooth. Now, when I'm doing heavy multitasking and switching between apps, it does have a tendency to get a little hiccupy. And when I am... Um, Going under heavy load, like playing games and switching them between apps, heavy, heavy, doing text messages, Facebook, Twitter, um, uh, YouTube, it does get a little glitchy. Not not bad, but certain, certain games take a little while to load, and it does, you notice just a little hitch. But other than that, when I'm using it, not so heavy, it runs buttery smooth. And I would have to say, again, that's probably a testament to the fact that Motorola did not skin it out heavy here. So, that's that. Now, moving on, let's talk about the Wi-Fi in this guy. Now, Wi-Fi wise, this has 802.11bg n dual band Wi-Fi so you have support for your 2.4 gigahertz band and your 5 gigahertz band and I must say the Wi-Fi in this guy runs great didn't have any issues with the Wi-Fi guys and now before I load up a little Wi-Fi test for y'all I just want to show y'all some of the results I got so as you can see there this is my results for data. Now I'm using data on T-Mobile and although that's kind of low, I was still able to do everything that I needed to do. Make calls, do navigation, get on YouTube, browse the web, even though those scores are like that. Y'all know scores may vary. Now down here, you can see these are the Wi-Fi scores. Let me, um, yeah, these are the Wi-Fi scores right here. And now I have a pretty good router and I must say, I was getting pretty decent speeds, and I even topped out at um, 90 megabits per second. In some cases, it actually peaked a little bit higher at 150 megabits per second, but these were the tests that I ran, and as you can see, I did it multiple times, and it's pretty good. So the Wi-Fi on here is pretty good. Now, let me just back up some. Now let's go ahead and I'll load up a, a YouTube video for you guys so you can see how that loads. And as you can see, it loaded up pretty good. Now I had it already open and it took a little bit of time to refresh, but it loaded up pretty good. Now, let me go ahead and play a few seconds for you guys. Let me just put this volume at about 50. This way I can get a little sample of what the speakers sound like. And we'll play a few seconds, so. How's everybody doing today? Back again with another video for you guys. And today, we're going to be doing my full review on the Skull Candy Hash 2 Bluetooth headphones. But real quick, before we get into this, I just want to cover 
some of the stuff that came with the headphones. First, let me, actually we'll do that one, we'll get to that. Let's talk about this user manual. Now this is a really... Now let me go ahead and scrub forward a little bit so you can see how it loads. Quality wise, I say you're not going to have any issues with this. And I do believe it's going to last me for a really long time. Because y'all y'all know, because I've said it before, I'm really a big fan of... Alright, so that was the Wi-Fi in this guy. And you can see it ran pretty much perfectly didn't have any issues with it and you can see the speakers sound great I don't know if that little clip did it much justice but these dual front firing speakers sound great so moving on here and let me run to my computer real fast let's talk about the bands that are supported in this guy and before I start rattling them off for you guys I just want to say that this guy pretty much runs on any network, guys. Any network. And this guy is pretty much unlocked for everybody. Now, this will work on T-Mobile, AT&T, Sprint, and even Verizon. And all of the um, subsidiary carriers or MVNOs that run on those networks just as long as you make sure that it supports these bands so alright gonna go ahead and run off these bands for you guys so you know cause this is important cause I get a lot of questions about you know what carriers support what this is why I include the band section in my videos so the regular bands the GSM and WCADMA bands are um, 8, 800, 850, 1700, 1900, 2100, and 900. And then again, it's 850, 900, 1700, 1900, and 2100. Now, the first, the first set that I ran off there, those were EU bands. So if you're overseas in Europe, if your carrier supports those bands, then you're good. The next set was the USA bands. So, if you're on a carrier that supports those bands, then you're good. Now, for the most important set of bands, if you want LTE support, your carrier has to support these bands. So, band 1, 2100. Band 2, 1900. Band 3, 1800. Band 4, 1700 and 2100. Band 5, 850. Band 7, 2600. Band 8, 900. Band 12, 700. Band 17, 700. Band 20, 800. Band 25, 1900. Band 28, 700. Band 29, 700, band 40, 2300, band 41, 2500, alright, and there's more, those were all the bands including the EU bands, so if you're overseas and your carrier supports those bands, you're good, now in terms of the United States, it's pretty much all the same, so pretty much it's the same for overseas as it is in the United States, so I'm not going to go ahead and rattle off those bands again because it's all the same. So as I've said, just make sure your carrier supports those bands and you should get perfect LTE service. And I must say guys, my LTE worked pretty much anywhere on this device and it worked beautifully. Now, moving on, let's talk about the Bluetooth in this guy. Now, Bluetooth-wise, I believe this guy runs Bluetooth 4.1. And I must say, I did have a slight issue with the Bluetooth where sometimes it would believe it was connected when it wasn't. So it wouldn't let me connect. And I just had to toggle it off and on. And that fixed that. So as you can see here, let me let this focus. 
that I actually connected it up to a few of my headphones here, and it worked no problem. I also had it synced with a few of my phones, and it worked no problem. But it did have that little hiccup where it would think it was connected when it wasn't, and that look that'll cause a little bit of a connection error. But other than that, it worked pretty much how it was supposed to. Let me go ahead and turn it back off. So the Bluetooth on here, it works pretty good. I can't give it a, a good solid score because there was a little hiccup, but it works pretty good. Now, moving on, let's talk about the uh, the GPS in this guy. Now, GPS wise, guys, I would say that this thing is awesome. It connected up within seconds, didn't have any issues, and as you can see right here, this is from a GPS status that I took, and this is all within seconds. And it got a 3D fix within seconds, accurate up to 33 feet. So the GPS on here was phenomenal. Now, I was having some issues where it would tell me to reroute even though my destination was right ahead that was due to software I just did some software updates and I'm no longer having that issue but the overall GPS package in here is pretty solid pretty solid so that's it for the GPS let's keep it moving now let's talk about the call quality in this guy so call quality wise and as I said uh, no, actually, I don't think I said, but I'm using this on T-Mobile, as you can see right there. Let me let that focus. Sorry, guys. I'm using it on T-Mobile, and I must say, call quality on T-Mobile's network has been great. I've had no issues with the overall call quality. All my calls have been crystal clear and loud, and they actually get very loud. Now, people on the other end said they've had no issues hearing me, and everything has been smooth and great. Speaker calls have been great. They've been clear. They've been loud. They don't get muffled, which I'm happy to say, and that has to be because all of the speakers are on the front, so you can't really muffle it. So, speaker calls and call quality overall has been pretty good. Now, moving on. Now let's talk about the cameras in this guy. So, let's see. Guess the first thing we can talk, let's talk about the user interface here first. So, let's bring that up. So pretty much, this is your overall general user interface. Now, I enabled some features here to make it a little bit easier, but fresh out the box, this is pretty much what you have. You pretty much tap and it shoots. So you tap and it shoots. Now up front here, you have a 5 megapixel camera with LED flash and on the back, you have a 21 megapixel camera which does shoot in 4K and it does shoot slow motion video. Let me show you right there. So you have 4K and slow motion video. And in terms of resolutions, if you want the widescreen to 16 by 9, it's going to bump you down to 16.1 megapixels. If you want to take advantage of all 21 megapixels, you're going to have to shoot in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Now, I've already said this, but I really enjoy shooting in the 16 by 9 widescreen aspect ratio. So that's pretty much what I keep it on. Now... I think that the um, the 4x3 has a tendency to make the pictures look a little letterboxy sometimes, but when I need to take advantage of a full resolution shot so I can get more space to crop, I use that 4x3. Um, but overall, guys, I would have to say that the cameras work great. Now, if we switch to the front here, yeah, if we switch to the front here, you pretty much get all of the same features and it's pretty much the same style so you got to use your wheel here and you got your HDR and all of that and also in the front you can record 
a slow mo video in the front camera. Let me let that focus. Alright, guys. And you get HD video. And that's full HD video with the front. Now, picture wise, if you want to shoot in widescreen, you're going to have to bump it down to 3.8 megapixels. If you want to take advantage of that, um, the full 5 megapixels, you're going to have to go in the 4 by 3 ratio again. And like I said, I really enjoy the widescreen, so I pretty much keep it there in the widescreen format. So, all of my, um, all of my shots were in widescreen, so that was at 3.8 megapixels, just so you know. So, and I've actually recorded a lot of video with this guy. I've done some un unboxings, some reviews that will be up soon if they're not up already. Actually, been working on a lot, guys. And so now, let's just s scroll to the pictures. So, as y'all can see, this is a picture of some headphones that I purchased. That review will be up, should be up already if it's not. And this picture came out really, really well, guys. I don't even think the camera is doing it justice. The colors were pretty much spot on. And yeah. Other things, I took a picture of the logo on the box, and it came out really well. I figured I'd use it as some wallpapers later on. And there you go. That looks really good. Now this was a picture of all my headphones. Came out really nice. Now this was a low light shot using the front facing camera and I would say it did okay. Now, yeah, I mean it's low light. You're not going to get as good a quality in low light. The flash does help some and I was able to take an okay picture. For better pictures you're going to need more light. So it is what it is. Now this is outside using the rear facing camera. Another low light shot, and my camera's having issues with exposure. But if I zoom in here, get all that detail there. There we go. Get all of that detail so I can read all of the information on the motor, I can see all the logos, and everything. And I must say, for a nighttime shot with the flash, this came out really well. Now, moving on, this was, uh, I actually rolled up to my friend's house, and as you can see, it was kind of rainy that day, and it kind of overexposed just a little bit, but all in all, I would say the picture came out nice. Now, this is in my room, don't have, don't have good lighting in my room, rocking out to some headphones, figured I'd take a shot, it came out okay, and then... I actually took some samples of the slow motion video and everything and I think I'm going to put that up in my uh, my video samples playlist so I'm not going to show you guys that there alright so overall guys I would say that the cameras on this are pretty good point and shoot wise you point and shoot it you line it up right you're going to get a good shot almost all the time so the cameras on here are pretty good now moving on let's talk about gaming on this guy now I pretty much can say that this can pretty much handle any game that you guys want to throw at it I use these four so I use Asphalt 8 Mortal Kombat Fruit Ninja and Subway Surfer I also tested um, Real Racing 3 and Nova 3, and they all ran with no problems. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and um, load up this game here, and we'll play a few seconds for you guys, a few seconds for you guys, so you can see, and then we'll keep it moving. Alright. Always got your ads when it's free. What is one to do? Oh, 
Alright, so let's go ahead. Play any stage for you guys. Go ahead and start up a race. And as you guys can see, it loads up pretty well. Stop talking now, because the uh, in-game music should be starting any second. So y'all enjoy the little bit of gameplay. Alright, so there, as y'all saw, pretty much handled the game, no issues, and the game looked great. Now, let's keep it moving. Let's talk about the benchmarks on this guy. <clears throat> so, benchmarks wise, let me pull it up real fast. Alright, I thought I had it loaded up already, but yes, not. So we're just going to go ahead and pull it up like that. There we go. So right here, this was using the Valemo Metal Test. And you can see it actually ranked pretty high, and it scored a 2,052. And it actually placed in third place overall. Um, outclassed clearly by the um, the S6 and the G4. Now, keep it moving. This was Quadrant, and it scored a 23,824, and it pretty much beat out everything in this test. Okay, this was Geekbench 3 here. And as you can see, it scored a 1,231 on the single score and a 3,501 on the multi-core. And that's pretty good. Now, in terms of 3D Mark, and this is the Ice Storm Unlimited test, it scored a 19,204. Moving on, this was Antutu. And as you can see right there, it placed in 11th. And it 